Yes. Jimmy Rogers has been so bullish about China for years and years and years. What is he saying about the Shanghai Stock Exchange Index, which was at 6,100 in 2007 and is now at 2,086? I mean, if you ask for value, maybe there might be some value in China. But I'm just wondering, what, how do you explain your bullishness about China and the poor performance of stocks? Well, I'd be very happy to. But first of all, Mark, it's the middle of the night there. You, were you at the disco? Where, where are you? He stayed up for futures now because that's I, what a great I can show see is. Why. Mark, I'm, I'm bullish on China. Is China's going to be the next great country in the world. I, I was violently and vehemently telling people not to buy China when it was going up in 2007. I only buy China when it collapses. I bought China three times in my life, one in 1999, one in 2005. And, and the third time was in November of 2008. This is public record. Everybody can look it up. They know that. So my view of China, though, when I'm bullish on China, is that China is going to be the next great country in the world. I know you think Russia is going to be the next great country in the world. I happen to think China is. My children speak Chinese, et cetera, et cetera. But that does not mean that people should rush out and buy Chinese shares. Uh, there's a huge difference in saying that China is going to be the greatest country in the 21st century and saying that uh, you should buy Chinese stock. I own Chinese stock, yes. And if they collapse, Mark, I promise you I will buy more Chinese stock. I buy them for my daughters. I put them aside. My daughters don't even know they own them. Someday, I hope they're going to say, gosh, that old man was a smart guy. <laughs> Jim, I want to jump in here because it's pretty unique to be able to have you and Mark on the line at the same time. I want you to ask Mark an opinion because obviously, a question rather, because obviously he's very opinionated and he's very bearish on this market. So what would you ask him? Well, I'm bearish too. No, but I was, in, I was in Bangkok last night myself, but Mark, I didn't see you at the disco. Which disco did you go to? <laughs> well, I go to lower class discos. <laughs> well, I've got the lowest class of all. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't even let me in. It's, I'm too high class for some of these places. Uh, well, I don't, I don't really have any questions. I, I happen to agree with Mark about most, uh, many things. Uh, Mark seems, pe thinks that people should buy stocks these days. I th I'm short stocks. Uh, as I said, I'm long commodities, I'm long currencies, and I'm short stocks. All right, no, so, actually, so I, overall, I, I, have the, to the, 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 I have to correct this statement. Go ahead, Mark. Four months ago, I turned quite positive about some European markets like Portugal, Spain, Italy, France, Greece, because they were at the 2009 lows or even lower. But I'm not buying right now shares. As I told you in the earlier discussion, I'm rather lightening up on positions. I don't want to own no shares. Because in a money printing environment, you don't know how far the money printing will go. And it can flow into stocks, or I also own gold and I own real estate. But basically, in general, I think much of the asset bubble has been discounted by investors. But and Mark, they rushed how can you say that? Because I'm watching the markets every day. I happen to agree with you. I'm watching the markets, though, and they continue to rally every day. So how can you yes, say that? Yes, but it's, not it's... every stock is rallying, and not every market is rallying. A lot of stocks have peaked out. Say, as an example, uh, Apple seems to have peaked out. Like Maybe what? it will make a new high. But I'm just saying, a lot of stocks are already in downtrends, and a lot of stocks have declined last year by 40%. Say coal stocks were all down 40, 50% from their highs. All right, well, Mark, talk to me about a stock like Apple, for example. We've watched Apple have a huge run. Is that one of the stocks that you think is peaked out? Because that's one that I think just when it can't go any higher, it does. I think it has peaked out, but say, I wouldn't necessarily short it. Uh, because as I said, in a money printing environment, you never know. But in general, concept-wise, and optimism of investors and the headlines and everybody is an Apple fan and everybody needs an Apple device on his uh, knees, uh, I think, yeah, probably the stock has peaked out. 
All right, well, let's hold that thought for a second and talk about the money printing environment. Jim, given a situation what we've seen, QE3 with Bernanke, and now he's sort of taking a position that we're going to keep printing money until we bring this unemployment number down, what would your take be, depending on what happens with the presidential election? If we get Romney in the White House, are we going to back off that a little bit? It doesn't matter, Jackie, whether it's Romney or Obama. They're both the, they're both the same. They're no, they don't know, have a clue what's going on. They caused the problems. These are the guys that caused, got us into this situation. Right, right. Okay. You, you think they're going to get us out? And yeah. Mr. Bernanke is certainly not going to get us out, for God's sakes. But, you know, he is going to print money. He is printing money. And, and the risk, I'm sure, it, Mark, Mark's not. But the risk, as Mark points out, is, you know, if they print a lot of money, I mean, why can't the Dow go to 20000 30000 Right. 30, right. Uh, you know, the money's not worth anything, but it could kill me on my shorts. Because, Absolutely. Uh, well, that's, a, they, that's but, a view. But, 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 but hey, let me quickly say one thing. Sure. If they continue to print that money and the Dow does go to 30000 I assure you gold and a lot of other things are going to skyrocket as well. So hopefully my longs will <laughs> make up that's for it. Yeah. I, well, I would have to worry, though, Mark, that if, about real estate, because if they print that much money, eventually the bond market is going to collapse. Interest rates will go through the roof, and, and real estate is going to suffer, isn't it? Well, I agree with uh, Jimmy on uh, uh, the fact that both presidents are clueless. <laughs> the only one that had any clue at the conventions was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> yes. You're one of the only people yes. to He's say that. He's the only that, one who has an yeah. idea about the real world. The other ones are just clueless. <laughs> All right, guys. And as, the Teflon, as... on top of that, they're not only clueless, but they are also completely artificial. No genuine act behind them. Well, you worry a lot with politicians that that's the case. But, of course, you guys, I could let this conversation go on and on to have wait, you, too. Wait, wait, Jackie, wait, Jackie, you've got to stop for a minute. If, if the, he, it's worse than clueless, Mark, because they think they know what they're doing, and so they're dangerous. <laughs> if they were just clueless and looked out the window all day, we wouldn't have a problem. But they think they have the solutions, and their solutions, unfortunately, are what's making the situation worse. That's clueless precisely the point. This and is very dangerous. dangerous to have ignorant people believing that they know something. All right, fair enough, guys. Clueless and dangerous. We'll end on that note. Again, great to have you both on together. That was a first ever on CNBC, the investment <coughs> equivalent of Elvis and Sinatra together on the same stage <laughs> if they were alive.